That's right, you're listening. Namely 90s. Namely 90s. La la la. I think one of my friends subscribed to our YouTube channel tonight. So nice. hopefully this was worth it. Welcome to Namely 90s. Wow. The podcast that takes you back to the time before smartphones, Google, and Y2K. Join your hosts as they relive the pop culture that shaped a generation and the parts that many people wish they could forget. Listen in to the conversation about how the decade defined those who spent their childhood there and how it shaped them as adults. So... Turn down the grunge and dial up the internet. Let's get started. It's time for Namely 90s. That's right. You're listening to Namely 90s. My name's Andrew, and over there's Brandon. That's me. You can find us online at Namely90s.com or on Instagram and Blue Sky at Namely 90s. You can also find this show on YouTube every Monday at youtube.com slash at namely 90s. Come join one of our nearly or just over 100 subscribers. Just over. Uh, and also, you know, if you want to support the show, head over to patreon.com slash namely 90s. Also with the 90SN. Get signed up for one of our support levels. I feel like I'm going to do the traffic next. <laughs> like, what was that voice that I just... Did? I'll take the weather. Um, you know. Yeah, 72 degrees. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, all right, all, um, right, all right. I have a very special rip to the max tonight. 104. Oh, that's unfortunate. Rip to the max to star 101.5 <laughs> with Kenton Allen in the mornings, which has just switched formats to Hank FM, which is real country with real something or another. I, I forgot that. I forgot the, the thing, well, the quote just, or whatever, but just a lot of Beyonce. Um, <laughs> star 101.5 has, has ceased to exist. Huh? And it just switched over. Yeah, it switched over on April 1st, and it was not an April Fool's joke. And 98.9, which used to be the bull country in Seattle, mm-hmm. turned to another, like, it tried to replace, like, uh, uh, the mountain or something, like, alternative alternative. Well, the mountain and got replaced already. No one listened to it. Right. So they decided to make it back into a country station and okay. hire the old morning show host. Huh. The guy who was on 100.7 The Wolf for, like, 12 years is back mm-hmm. on the bull. Didn't they make it the wolf again? Like a set? No. Like, wasn't it the wasn't it the mountain? Then it was the wolf, and then it was no. The wolf turned into something else. Uh, anyway, no. so yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, radio in Seattle. Who knew? But it was not an April Fool's joke. Yeah, uh, I guess so. Um, there was a it, time when one hundred point seven, the wolf came on the air. It used to be something called one hundred point seven was a talk radio station in mm-hmm. Seattle, and Loveline played on it. That's what we listened That's to it. That, that, well. It moved to the end later, I believe. That's right. Because like the men's room it was 100.7 the talk or something. I thought it was they they both they simulcasted Loveline. And if you couldn't get. No, they moved because 100.7 turned into a country station. Oh, 100.7 oh, the, the wolf. wolf. Right. But I remember when the when 100.7 came on the air and they switched formats. Mm hmm. There was one I was listening to it, and the guy, the DJ, kept playing "Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy" by Big and Rich, but he thought he was playing other songs, and so he played the song <laughs> for hours on end. And people were calling in and being like, "Dude, you're playing the same song over and over," and he didn't believe them. And I never heard that guy on that station ever again. <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, that's and a lot of saving for- horses and riding cowboys, and rightfully so. Um, uh. Fun fact, apparently uh, the channel, uh, the 101.5 frequency in Seattle was a country station in its second format and from 1974 to 76. Interesting. And then mm-hmm. it was something for a while and then it was uh, adult top 40 since like 92. Yes, uh, 94. 94. It was top 40 from 83 to 94 and then hot adult contemporary from 94 to 2024. I'm hot adult and contemporary as well. Apparently, uh, and it says uh, it switched over formats at 2 p.m. I guess. And uh, <laughs> although the station, why does it say KPLZ? Oh, that's what that this was. The call, call letters. Yeah. Um, 
by the way, also not an April Fool's joke. Uh, they did release Oppenheimer in Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, boy, that's a bold move. Um, talk about rubbing salt in the wound. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure they made play. five million bucks though. So that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, you know, international market. That's that's always good. Their first song was "It's Five O'clock Somewhere," and the last song was. End of the Road by Boys to Men and Good Riddance Time of Your Life by Green Day. Oh. Fun. Uh, speaking of April Fools, you're yes. a bastard. <laughs> 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 Just wanted to say that. Uh, <laughs> I left a, I left that part in at the end of uh <laughs> At the end of which part? Uh you called me a bastard at the uh at in after the outro. And okay. for those of you that don't know and don't listen, for those of you that have been listening to us for almost two hundred episodes plus the specials, <laughs> so almost two hundred and fifty episodes. Um at the end after the outro music, I do leave a little clip of whatever one, whatever's funnier. One of us will, will both say a quip af- after we mm-hmm. finish uh, recording. And usually Andrews makes it into the end of the episode um, where he's most it's comedy funny. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I, and just for clarification, cause you're like, is everything that Cat Williams said a lie? And I was like, well, yes, but he did say he did say the things about P. Diddy. So if if I, I needed to clarify that he said the things about P. Diddy on Club Shay Shay. Um, but everything I said in that little uh, bracket of weird predictions afterwards. Yeah, were, were those not, AI generated or those come from your twisted mind? Those came from my twisted mind, but uh, in court, I will say that came from AI, and uh, we can leave the slander to open AI. Um, yeah. It came from artif- artificial insemination. Yeah. Um, please don't <laughs> cancel me. Uh, <laughs> that's a good one. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what time we started. Um, <laughs> a while back. Yes. Uh, I, I have nine I, minutes showing of recording time. Yeah, yeah which is, but, means we've been talking for less than that. Correct. Um, so it was Easter. He is risen. Oh, and <laughs> it was also Nash, like the kickoff. Co- mm. Kickoff. F- ki- oh kick my her. god, I worked a long day You're trying to kick say off kick of oh. national. Oh, it was trans. No, well. Wasn't it? No. I, I, Easter happened to coincide with uh, National Trans Visibility Day this year. Thank you. You're, you are welcome. I get confused because there's like months. It was Women's History Month. and then it, well, it was also it, last month. Easter was last month. Wasn't it on April 1st? No, that was April Fool's Day. Oh my gosh, you're right. <laughs> Arr, March. Uh, uh, March 31st, Easter. yes. Yeah, it was a March Easter this year, um, pretty early. Uh, but yes, uh, it happened to coincide this year because, uh, as we all know, Easter is based off of the lunar cycle for some reason. Um, and it's not based off the menstrual cycle. I mean, aren't those two somehow related? They or could something? be. They could be. They could pertain. Pertain. Two men try to explain women's periods. <laughs> uh, the podcast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the ride and i'm uh, just kidding <laughs> <laughs> yeah they sponsor us and make it a universal studios uh i almost said wet Everyone's ride my favorite comedian does uh you know it's like always like batman the ride or uh-huh. or you know whatever superman the ride uh, okay like, what about jfk the ride that'd be a hell of a ride <laughs> <laughs> He's like looking over both shoulders <laughs> You're supposed to keep uh, waving and credit otherwise to you don't Brian get the Regan for that joke <laughs> experience. Uh, does Brian Regan do um, musical comedy too? No. Does he have songs? Okay. Nope. I thought someone said they karaoke his song, but I nope. must be thinking of another similar name to Bill Burnham. Is that a name? Yeah. Yeah, actually. Uh, maybe he has musical comedy. And he said they sang that. Um, Yeah. Uh, Did you, were you going somewhere with uh, Trans Visibility Day? 
just that it happened and it pissed off the Republicans. Mm -hmm. Uh, Although I'll steal a joke now Um, (laughs) that it did do its job. Um, It was probably the most visible uh, transitability day has ever been um, because it was plastered all over Fox News. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they did not did not care for it. Um, Wow. Not that I'd know, but it's just like the clips and the outrage. And for some reason, YouTube serves up like, here's three liberal channels and Fox News. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't, I don't want that. I don't yeah, want this. I don't want I, I don't want any of that. I want maybe local news. And even yeah. then, I don't. Yet, it's on me to click off the, the suggested. Uh, yeah, they lost their they lost their minds. It's like. How dare, how dare Joe Biden? How <laughs> dare Joe Biden? Dirty Joe, let's go, Brandon. How dare, how dare he put it on uh, Easter? Easter, it's a failure. It's a failure in his presidency that he put National Trans Visibility Day on Easter. He didn't. It didn't. It's always happened. <laughs> Uh, I, I think started no, I'm in the starting 90s. to learn though, and I'm not saying this like as a slight to this day mm-hmm. specifically, because I'm not talking about this day specifically. You're but every day is a goddamn day for something. Yes. How, like, last month was National Noodle Month. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like, uh, uh, oh, it's um, National People Who Breathe Air Day. Mm. Wow. Okay. And again, I'm not trying to make this slight to this. Like that's a legitimate hall, like a legitimate sort of like national holiday, but yeah. like national macaroni and cheese day is not a fucking holiday. Yeah. You know what you're, I mean? You're saying this is a side tangent. This is not yeah, related this is to a side na- tangent. Uh, national trans visibility day. Yeah. You can continue the change. That's it. I, I don't need oh. more. Uh, well, yeah. And, and some of the things are like, most of the things, most of the, oh, it's uh, National Talk Like a Pirate Day or National uh, Eat Pizza Day. Usually it's sponsored hell by cor- it is. Normally sponsored by corporations. Uh, if you, if you like deep dive back into like when it first started being popular. Oh, it's a tweet from Chef Boyardee to eat SpaghettiOs today in 2014. And it just kept coming up again because someone aggregated it into a stupid calendar on a website that now other social media managers Google so that they know what to tag their uh, posts with for the day. Um, Hi. (laughs) Uh, All right. Well, I think that does it. Yeah. Also Shane Courtney from Smosh got married and that blew my mind for the entire Monday. Oh, I do have to say I gave a bad review. I think on this show of, Mm-hmm. smash burger oh yeah you did or at no. least you told me you you at least shake told shack. me shake, shake shack. shack yeah yeah yeah. uh went to shake shack again waited in mm-hmm. line for a goddamn eternity mm-hmm. um they didn't let me pay for my food that was nice of them and i got i figured out i got the double stack burger the ratio is wrong with the single yeah and i got bacon um oh yeah it was uh top notch did you get the cheese fries? No, because I can only have so much cheese in a day before I start to crap my pants. <laughs> Not quite. Okay. Did I, you have I, fries and a little little dipper of the cheese? You just no, they never have the any, cheese sauce. The only thing about Shake Shack, they mm. never have anything. Oh, really? Oh, I can Ours see that is one. out of everything all the time. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, it's still getting <laughs> rushed, like which is insane to me. Like, um, you you don't see that kind of rush for a Shake Shack in like. New York, uh, no, Vegas, but it's just such uh, a novelty. It's right Angeles. there by the Dave and Buster's, mm-hmm. the bank. The Dave and Buster's is now a Starbucks. Used and to be the a Toys R Us that used to be a Toys R Us is now an Ashley Home Store. They turned the Toys R Us into Ashley Home Store. The Dave and Buster's used to be a Sears. <laughs> yeah, now it's condos. Now it's condos. Uh, sorry, International Transgender Day of Visibility. Um, found in two thousand nine. Just wanted to. Thanks, get, Obama. I anyway. just want to get the. I just want to get the corrections in before, um, you know, next week. <laughs> That's that was a definite. <laughs> thanks, Obama. I mean, uh, it, it it was. <laughs> yeah. It was during his presidency. <laughs> exactly. But I haven't said that phrase in a while. That's fun. 
And it it was spearheaded by the U.S.-based youth advocacy organization, Trans Student Educational Resources. Trans Student... Sir? Uh, Sir, yeah. (laughs) I always think it's funny when (laughs) these places have acronyms that are like, they mean something. I just Uh laugh. (laughs) It makes you laugh. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to send you something in the the text. (laughs) Okay. Um, meanwhile, I'm just thinking of, uh, citizens raging against phones. <laughs> They're raging against phones, Laszlo. How many people? Uh, <laughs> there are three of us. It's hard to get people to join, uh, or it's hard to keep people informed about the meetings though, because our carrier, pe- our carrier pigeons keep disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> Where did the uh, chat button go? Sorry, it took me a minute. Oh. No, I, I said it was a tech. Oh, okay. Um, well, uh, while I read this, uh, Andrew, you can prompt us on what we're doing this week. <laughs> All right. This week is another boot or reboot. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just, I cannot myself. This is another a South Park reference. <laughs> it might be edition of boot or reboot where we look at a, a movie Mm-hmm. And a reboot of that movie and decide which mm-hmm. one we would watch if we had to choose one. And usually the first Gun movies from the 90s. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so we've done Roadhouse and Roadhouse. We've, we've done, done Roadhouse. Footloose and Footloose. I don't think we did Footloose, um, but that's where Didn't I got we? the idea from. Yeah, we did. I think we did. I don't think we did because Footloose is an 80s movie. Uh, you're thinking of Point Break. Point Break. Thank you. We did, we did Point Break. We did Roadhouse. Um, <clears throat> we've done... There was another one. There was another one. Although the Point Break one was the one that you probably remember the best. Yeah, the Point Break one was bad. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I need... <clears throat> to not fixate on this, just do what we're doing. <laughs> So am uh, I watching things this time? You are. We are. We are. We, we, are. All, we all are. Um, we are oh, the we world. Did, we, did, we did the Flash. We did the Flash TV series. Oh. Yeah. Uh, but this, this, this episode is on Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. Are you familiar with Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead? I'm not. Also, it's once again, it has the description of coming of age black comedy. If it was a um, comedy starring in four black people would it also be called a black comedy well maybe you should read the second <laughs> description because there are black people in the no i know one. i just never know what that means like uh, my joke it's not even really a joke it's a black comedy is kind of like a dark comedy right mm-hmm. but and if it was a comedy the word black to of black mean, like would you say yeah. black comedy as well but mean something different or would you say something different does it sound feel better to say dark comedy? Kind of, yeah. Mm, and we can call it a dark comedy. No, I'm not saying like we should say it differently. I'm just asking like, is it implied with different inflection, or <laughs> yes. is there like a different phrase for comedies by and for black people? Like, you know what I mean? I mean, if you're talking about like in language, yeah, uh, in verbal in verbal speaking to each other, yes, the inflection is very important. <laughs> I was just curious, and, and I'm asking it seriously. Like, I never know what to make of that. Was that you? <laughs> what? Oh, uh, I just had a very loud, angry scream in my ear. Um, mm. Must be the ghost. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, no, I'm not aware of this movie. Uh, well, it star. It's a 1991 American coming of age dark comedy film. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and it stars Christina Applegate. <laughs> And a bunch of kids. Um, also, David Duchovny's in this. Uh, wow. Basically, the plot focuses on a 17-year-old girl who assumes the role as head of the house when their elderly babysitter, whom her mother had hired to watch over the kids uh, while she's in Australia, suddenly dies. Um, it, yeah. Okay. Uh, sure. They, it was the 90s. They didn't, they didn't have voice chat. That doesn't even make sense to me. FaceTime. Why? I mean, that's the point. That's the point of this movie. It's like, 
mom's gone oh, for oh the oldest girl becomes yes in charge uh, yes when the elderly babysitter dies and their mom's away for the summer got it and their mom's a single parent because that's what i do i go to australia all summer and leave my children at home with a babysitter for 20 dollars an hour that's going to be pretty spendy <laughs> yeah it's yeah, 24 I mean, hours a day what, what do they call them the living nannies um an elderly babysitter oh my gosh yep uh let me get this screen share going and we can watch <clears throat> the first one all right all right all right <laughs> Uh, indeed, indeed, indeed. When's your mom leaving for Australia? Oh, in about an hour and a half. She's leaving you guys all alone. I'm getting rid of her for two whole months. I can go to the beach. I can stay out as late as I want. I can do anything. I'm a That's free woman. Christina Applegate. Sure also, is. I, I'm going to apologize. This trailer doesn't have epic voiceover guy. So no, it's lame. Yeah. This is the elderly babysitter. Hey. Hello to you. Oh, I'm she's a I'm a babysitter. Yeah. What? What? All right, you little maggots, now line up. Are you serious? <laughs> I'll make your summer a living hell. Oh, hey. Okay. TV rocks your brain. Is the kid from uh, the Santa Claus again? No. No, this is 1991. But, okay. Um, he kind of he's in something. He looks he looks familiar. Um, uh, by the W W W W W B. The W W W W W B. I'll look it up while you watch more trailers. It's time we let her know the rules. Yeah, we outnumber her. Oh, Let's these haircuts. This is Sturrock. Oh yeah, it's very nineties. Oh my god. Um, she died in her sleep. He'll probably blame us. And be careful. I got her. Nice no, I'm on a skateboard. <laughs> Don't tell mom. They hide voice the over body. guy. <laughs> oh, that is about a voice over guy. Yeah, concealing a body. Isn't that called tampering with a corpse? Like, isn't that punishable by jail time? Y- yes. And also, like, who's this old lady who that she like dies? And no one like <laughs> checks in on her. True. Um. Th- th- yeah, I don't know. Keith Coogan, maybe. I don't All know. Right. Any relation to uh, Steve Coogan? Uh, Doubt it. he is the grandson of actor Jackie Coogan, so possibly. Anyway, the babysitter's dead. Rock and roll. Now Christina Applegate and her oh, there is epic voice what? bounce back for a summer with of my baby. No rules in your dreams, babe. No curfew. I, I keep seeing like a Taylor Swift haircut. Did her brother just ask how her, his baby was? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yes. No I mean, red. No pants. Oh, how you doing, Mom? No, Mrs. Durack's not here. She, um, she went to the yarn store. So, what do you guys want for breakfast? Cheese omelet. SpaghettiOs. Breakfast is served. <laughs> that kid looks like Matilda. Today, and don't forget to do the dishes, okay? <laughs> dishes are done, man. Dishes are done, man. <laughs> that was... Wow. Tell mom the babysitter's dead. There's no contact in that hit there. How can you honestly think something like that is going to do well? Like in a big commercial way when you release it. Yeah. um, Well, I mean, the 90s was a time of like, um, you know, uh, just movies about divorce and <clears throat> single parents and I think there the were some really talented like people in like TV and movie uh-huh. industries back then and just a ton of hacks. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, it, and like, clearly this is like coming off of like, Oh, the Goonies kid adventure kids. What do else do kids want to do other than find treasure? Live alone. And then the you dishes know, are done. He <laughs> like 90, 90, 91 was home alone. David like, Duchovny was in that film. Yeah. Yeah. That's a different word. He plays um, like the assistant. Mm. He, he, he plays an assistant to someone else or. um, So essentially Christina Applegate gets a job. She fakes her way into a job at a corporate office as someone's executive assistant 
and uh, he is like a department head or something and clashes with her. Okay. Um, yeah. So what's he's, the new one look he's like? He's the head inventory clerk. Well, the new one uh, is also a coming of age <laughs> dark comedy, but black comedy as well. Um, I don't think I can say that. It's a remake um, and it's coming out the week this episode drops. So I haven't oh. seen it yet. Here's a trailer. Uh, all we know is that Nicole Richie is yeah. playing the uh, the boss lady that um, the, the girl ends up being an executive assistant for. Um, but yeah, let's. Uh, do you know all who right. Nicole Richie is? Do you remember Nicole Richie? Lionel yeah, Richie's um, daughter. She was the one with. Uh, with. Uh, Paris Hilton. Uh, Yep, on the show called The Simple The Simple Life. There it is. Paris Hilton, that one. Yes, that one. You ready for this one? Yes, do it. Okay. Well, my comments are now making a lot of sense. Also, just note that this one's rated R for teen drug use, language, and some sexual references. The day in the life. Uh, the, uh, go. Mom had a nervous breakdown. Whoa! And now she has to go to Thailand to an immersive two-month yoga meditation retreat. So, premise, <laughs> thoughts. Um, a little bit more believable, maybe. Okay. But, what? Wait, a little bit more believable that instead of just going to Australia, she has to, uh, their mom had a mental breakdown and is going to Thailand for a retreat. Okay, fair enough. Um, <laughs> I would already a hundred times watch this over the other one. Just, just saying. Okay. Spoiler alert. But uh, okay. <laughs> We've been had a whole house by ourselves. We finna live like white kids. We crank it. Up. Oh. I'm Ms. Durack, the babysitter. Thank you, Ms. Durack. There goes my summer. I think I know her from House. I was gonna say, is that the same babysitter from the previous movie? <laughs> It could be. I think in how she played a woman that was like an old woman that was sex crazed because she had syphilis and a destroyed part of her brain. The mom or the babysitter? The, the babysitter. Oh, okay. I was like, um, interesting. All right. Let's keep going. I know how to discipline you. I watch Medea movies. Yeah, that's her. <laughs> that was funny. I, <laughs> the movie's uh, ticking a lot of boxes right now. To be fair, yeah. yeah. Uh, no more of this garbage. Where do you think you're going? She cut the cord. Why I think I like cord? it as an R-rated movie. I think that's what I'm reacting to. You need it more. You need it to be an R-rated movie to enjoy it. Get yeah, because it's like too much cheese. Do something, fair. bro. I know you said no guests, but we had already invited our church friends for Bible study. Oh, and you might hear music, but it's Christian hip hop. Hip hop ruined the blacks. So. Oh. <laughs> um, I love that because that is like that is a real person you know what I mean yes and although a caricature it's now just it's just like 50% of American voters <laughs> Jeez, yeah it's like Christian twerking well, I mean, I'm sure they were lying about that. Morning, Mrs. Sturak. Mrs. Sturak? Oh, she gray. Is that <clears throat> the girl that turned into a blueberry? And um, <laughs> I want to say Wonka. Wizard of Oz. That's not correct. It's uh, Willy Wonka. Yes, thank you. Hey, my first dead body. I'm for show sure going to juvie. <laughs> we're hungry. You got to get a job. Rose Lindsay? Unless you're my ex-boyfriend or my ex-boyfriend's wife. Nicole Richie? I am the executive assistant to the chief executive officer. Bring it in, sis. Whoa. A-frame hugs only. I didn't spend three hours in that sexual harassment course for nothing. You're screwed. <sighs> mm, worst actor in the project. Just want to say that. Nicole Richie? Yes. She's... Uh, that was horrible. I, I object, I, sir. I believed everything up until she started talking fair but also like, it was she, like she was reading a teleprompter she was in a comedy in the last like mm. half decade that was, mm. I thought she did okay 
I have a date. Nothing past second base. We don't need another mount to feed. Oh, I like the bonding. Oh, wow. Smart guy. It looks like mom. smart not guy. Here. It's not. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, it's it's not because it can't be because he's not a child anymore. I know, but um, same diff. I don't know. Maybe um, the Maori brother had a kid. Out on a very deserving spa day. I'm high as hell. I can't believe it's right in front of me. What is that job going to you? I just have so much responsibility right now. Die! Oh, I can't. DJ, drop the music! Oh. Happy hour? Goodbye. I'm here to catch a vibe. Goddamn Just gotta pause momentarily because of music. Um, uh, mm. Man? This is a time, man. They did the I line from the other one. I hate that line. Nothing <laughs> makes that line good. Stop doing uh, the line. In this one, they weren't shooting the plates, they were playing baseball with the plates. Uh. I mean Yeah, um, that comes out this week. Although I've not, like, other than this trailer, I've not seen anything. Uh, okay. About it. Uh, so you uh, you already gave your decision. That looks more. incredibly watchable compared to the first one. Because the old, because the old, because the older ones '90s related, or like. No, it, I think it, by it, being it, R rated. Like uh -huh. It's more accessible and like less cringy. But who is it for at that point? Like that's I mean, that's that's the one thing it comes back to. Who is this movie for? Like the 90s version was still True. kind of made for kids. But me as an and adult now would rather watch the, the new one. That's fair. I mean, that's fine. That, I'm, I'm not going to fault you for it. I thought that was a great trailer. I wasn't expecting it to. to no, I, I be that good. Yeah, I was fully expecting it to be horrible yeah horrible I it's mean, good yeah it, I, I do fear that that was the entire movie <laughs> you know what i mean like it was a two-minute trailer what else is left i mean it gets deeper and the brother and the sister like have to come together because they're like uh polar opposites at the beginning of the movie and, um, you know, she gets the stress of having to work in an office environment and being an executive assistant, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, but yeah. What about you? We, Same thing. I mean, I watched the old trailer like uh, a week or two ago because, um, that was going to be our next quotely nineties before, uh, Gaz and Dange took a break. Uh, they're back this week, I think. Um, and, uh, I was, I was watching clips from that movie and I was like, I remember this. This is like, I was enjoying it. And Christina Applegate can, can carry a movie. Um, but I, I don't know. It's harder now that like that movie actually looks good. Whereas like, it is very it is a very 90s movie um sometimes cult yes. classic just means bad it wasn't bad though it was just i mean it's it's not phenomenal it's 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 a good movie though like i i it doesn't when you're i think a metric i think we as a <laughs> as a movie going uh or at least watching it on tv movie experience people we should now have a metric of does it feel like i've wasted my time watching this and i would say you would not i i would leave film. the room probably <laughs> yeah sometimes like it's not something you want to watch but like it, it's interesting it kind of mm -hmm. it kind of grabs your attention you can't take your eyes off of it you mm -hmm. can't you have to know how it ends. didn't feel that with the first one yeah. i mean that trailer that was a terrible trailer Compared to, even though they they basically hit the same thing. Both also, I'm know. I'm pissed at '90s people for not being able to invent better technology. They had everything they needed. It was 1991. It was, it was probably shot in '90. They should have done better back then. They should have figured <laughs> it out before we did because it's garbage. Uh, 
It almost well, looks worse than like 50s movies and TV. Like, how did it get worse? The fact that the trailer, the only trailer I could pull for this this movie, and this is going to reflect in the Navy 90s minute that people are about to watch, <clears throat> was in... 480p or less yeah it was it was 240p it was it was letterbox um <clears throat> that doesn't bode well um yeah yeah well there you okay. go okay i would Better watch reboot. both i would uh it's not a gun to my head it's gonna to your head so um i'll watch both i liked the original um and like this actually looked like it hit pretty well um on the jokes yeah <sighs> All right, and now let's go to Brandon for the Namely 90s Minute. Welcome back to Namely 90s Minute. Every week we look back at a culturally relevant show, movie, or piece of pop culture that probably helps stoke the algorithm. This week, in honor of the reboot of Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead coming out, we're looking back at the original Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead is a 1991 coming of age dark comedy starring Kelly Bundy from Married with Children, Replicant Zora Sloan from Blade Runner, Knox Overstreet from Dead Poet Society, The Overbearing Mother from the TV series Providence, Jamie Lloyd from Halloween 4 and 5, Mulder from The X-Files, Lucy Moran from Twin Peaks, and the voice of Homer Simpson as the opening credits cartoon. The story revolves around 17-year-old LA high school graduate Sue Ellen Swell Crandall, who can't afford to fly off to Europe with her friends for summer vacation, which, when you graduate from high school and don't plan on continuing your education just means you're unemployed. Her divorced mother goes to Australia for the summer with her boyfriend and hires an old woman to look after Swell and her four siblings. The babysitter ends up being a tyrant, but luckily dies in her sleep. They assume the dead woman means they get to enjoy the freedom of living alone for the summer while their mom is away if they don't notify the authorities, and just drop the body off at the mortuary. Unfortunately, the dumb kids don't realize all the spending money was on their dead babysitter's body, so Swell gets a job at a fast food joint to make ends meet for her and her siblings. She hates the job and quits then fakes a resume to get hired as a receptionist and ends up getting a job as an executive assistant at a clothing company. Passing over the current receptionist, Carolyn, who immediately resents Swell. Swell tries to do the whole work-life balance thing and gets stressed out. Also, she inadvertently starts dating Carolyn's brother, who she worked with at the fast food restaurant. He confronts her about her double life and angrily parts ways with her when she doesn't want to come clean. Carolyn and her co-worker David Duchovny scheme to get Swell fired, and Swell also has to fight off the advances of her boss's boyfriend, who is an exec at the company. Meanwhile, she borrows slash steals from petty cash to keep her afloat until she gets her first paycheck, but her siblings also steal from the petty cash and blow it on expensive luxury items like a home entertainment center. Swell learns the company might go out of business, so she creates a new clothing line and her boss suggests they throw a banquet fashion show, and Swell, having lost all the petty cash to her siblings, convinces them to do it at her house and has her siblings clean it up, beautify it, and be caterers for the party. At the party, Swell outs her boss's flandering boyfriend who gets dumped on the spot, and then Carolyn tries to out Swell by showing their boss Swell's driver's license. Their boss calls Carolyn a petty bitch and gets rid of her. The party is a success and the buyers are interested in the new line of clothing. When Carolyn's brother shows up to win Swell back and Swell's mom returns from Australia, forcing Swell to come clean in front of everyone about all the lies. The boss says it's fine since Swell saved the company and offers her a job as her personal assistant, but Swell declines because now she wants to think about going to college and then kisses her new boyfriend. The film ends on the babysitter's gravestone with two mortuary workers planning on heading to Vegas with with the money they found on her body. And that's Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead in a namely 90s minute, more or less. And now back to the show. Um, well, uh, Christina Applegate's my retroactive uh, 90s crush. And uh, let, let's just be clear here. She was... Nope, don't even need to say that. I wouldn't. Um, I um, wouldn't. Moving on. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I was like, I was thinking back to all the BuzzFeed quizzes we did, and we definitely did um, like 90s, which 90s male heartthrob is your crush or whatever at one point. Right. Because uh, we were uh, admittedly gay baiting. And uh, that's where you pander to your um homosexual fans Andrew. <laughs> of which you have many um <laughs> let's see here uh let's do this uh, what, what's but we never yeah we never we have never done a um yeah this one's called we've never done one for women this one's called the 90s were full of hot characters 
here's which leading woman you're destined to end up with. All right. And let's just start with, I'm sorry, ladies. Because the first question is, what's your ideal quality in a woman? Is oh, it God. compassionate, athletic, creative, outspoken, adventurous, resourceful, intelligent, outgoing, driven, nature like alert? For, for outspoken, it's a typewriter with a picture of a word equality <laughs> no. on the paper that clearly wasn't typed by that typewriter. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Damn it. Um, also, yeah. Uh, All right. Um, uh, okay. Choices, choices, choices. Um, well, choices. Also, ladies, I'm single. I'm going to go with. Uh, intelligent. That would have been my choice. Uh, so. no, 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 I'll go. I'll go driven. Driven. That's a good quality. Um, I guess I said I was going to go intelligent. Why is there a picture uh, of a crucifix? Oh, no, I get it. Create. <laughs> it's a scrabble. Yeah. Uh, it was either creative or intelligent for me. Um, So I will pick adventurous. It's way too many choices here. There are um, way too many choices. Actually, I'm gonna I will pick intelligent since you gave it to me. What career would your dream woman have? Wildlife vet, doctor, personal trainer, Fortune 500 executive, YouTube vlogger, author, civil rights attorney, cultural ambassador. Mechanic or archaeologist? So weird, weird set here. Um, I, and I'm sorry that you as a married man have to take this quiz because this is, yeah, terrible. Um, uh, I, I like um, civil rights attorney. That sounds fun. That sounds in the vein of whatever I'm doing. Uh, I'd go actually with. No, go ahead. Um, personal trainer. Why not? I'm gonna switch to cultural ambassador then, because that means world travel, baby. <laughs> um, where would your meet cute be at a boxing gym? I'm so. Do you want to just do a different one? We could just cut all this and do a different. Uh, one. We may as well see it through. Okay, uh, and then that just got left in. Where would your meet cute be at a boxing gym, karaoke night at the bar, volunteering in soup kitchen, in a hotel lobby, at a friend's barbecue, while help painting a mural at a religious event, at an art gallery opening, at the dog park, while attending an investment seminar? Those are two separate ones. <laughs> at the dog park <laughs> while attending an investment seminar. <laughs> um... Boy, dog people are a little bit much. Um, <laughs> Friends barbecue. I will go with karaoke night at the bar. Because in the know, soup kitchen in a be. hotel lobby. <laughs> <laughs> I told you this one was pretty bad. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, pick a date night. Massages and a five star dinner. Cycling in a picnic. <laughs> Dance lessons, sunset hike, escape room, uh, helping in a community garden, taking a trail ride, cooking lessons, splatter paint room, and drinks and pool at the pub. You know, I kind of, I just, I want to know who all this like selfless stuff is going to, to, um, end up with. Cause there's like, there's a clear one clear route with the community garden <clears throat> and the, civil rights and uh activist and the what was the other thing oh soup kitchen but um i i like escape rooms um that sounds fun it sounds like a fun date i don't think that's a first date though because or unless it's like a group thing why don't you just drink some pool at the pub drink some pool at the pub uh what's a couple's goal of yours host a trivia podcast <laughs> take the year to travel the world Build a tiny house on own land. Compete in an Ironman competition. Camping trip across the country. Start a family. Write a children's book together. 
campaign for a cause. Who's the author? Start a business together. Record a song together. Who's the musician? What is Jewel the musician? Oh, please let it be Jewel. Um, I'm gonna go with. Uh, none of these. Yeah, uh, I don't want a tiny house. Uh, I already did it, but I'll say start a family. Okay. Um, I, 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 I guess I would want to start a trivia podcast. That sounds interesting. All right. I already said, I already said world travel. You know what? Pick, pick a TV podcast. show to binge watch together. The masked singer, hot trash, Loki, the amazing race, shark tank, the handmaid's tale, the walking dead, the Mandalorian nailed it. Station 19 or survivor. I thought you were patting yourself in the back. Nailed <laughs> it. Um, boy, slim pickings. Um, I love both Mando and Loki, and oh, uh, I think I think I love Star Wars more than Marvel. So I'm gonna go with a Mando. I'm gonna choose Survivor. Nice. Uh, pick a feature you'd want in your house together: a home gym, a studio space, private land to explore. Smart security, off-grid energy, extra rooms for kids and guests, two separate walk-in closets, dining room for entertaining, three-car garage slash workshop, or a home study. <laughs> One of these things are not like the other. Well, I really want a three-car garage workshop or home study, but I'm going to go with workshop. Um, I want off-grid energy. Pick a housewarming event to host. Robbie Burns night, poetry dinner, Super Bowl watch party and touch football, gingerbread decorating contest, uh, deck building and barbecue, disco dance party, meteor shower, viewing picnic, takeout and global trivia night, wine tasting, family reunion dinner, or neighborhood cleanup and picnic. If it's a meteor shower viewing picnic, would that not be on your own? Uh, house at your house. Well, wine tasting. Fair. Um, I guess I'll do a trivia oh, and takeout. Is there more? What? There's more. Pick a dinner to share together: ribs and sides, mushroom risotto, pizza, steak frites, vegetarian stuffed peppers, grilled shrimp, empanadas, cheese ravioli, clam chowder, or kebabs and rice. That's not really steak frites. Uh, no, it's a it's a tomahawk it's a, steak. That's with carrots. Uh, sweet potato fries. Yeah, that's, if that's your steak frites, uh, you're a monster. That's disgusting. <laughs> is uh, why does a tomahawk look so small? <laughs> or do they just have giant? It's just been Frenched sweet potatoes. I was thinking it was a lamb shank. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you going with? Like um, how the grilled shrimp is clearly pizza. fried. Pizza. Um, yeah, that was an easy one to take. Oh, uh, I hate it when it has you choose a woman, like an actual what? woman. Pick That's next up. And pick a modern movie lady. Patience. Sorry, I, what? I gotta get one cheese ravioli, I guess, for me. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you chose. I, I apologize. No you were first. Patience Phillips, Catwoman, Lenny or Letty Ortiz, whoops, Fast and the Furious, Carrie Bradshaw, Sex in the City, Lara Croft, Tomb Raider, uh, Nyota Uhura. Wow, s- you did that well. Star Trek. Um, which isn't, anyway, uh, Donna Sheridan, Mamma Mia, here we go again. Diana Prince, Wonder Woman. Uh, Zach, yeah, oh, wow, Zach, why did I say Zach? Zia Rodriguez, Jurassic <laughs> World, Queenie Kowalski, Fantastic Beasts, and Katniss from The Hunger Games. Yeah, you're right, it is a little cringy. Um, also, are they saying pick 80-year-old Carrie Bradshaw? Yeah, or? Carrie Bradshaw is elderly in this picture. <laughs> Well, because it's the it's not this is not a photo from Sex and the City. This is a photo from uh, the new and one. And then there was one, or and then yeah, it happened again, one. or so. It, yeah, whatever. Highlander. There can only um, be one. 
I'm going with Diana Prince, <laughs> Wonder Woman. Fair. Um, I I am at a loss. Um, I I like the actress who plays Zia Rodriguez, which just made me think she. I don't believe I don't believe the actress is um of of that descent. Um, who? Uh, so I will pick her, or maybe I'm thinking of just someone else. Oh no, you're. I'm wrong. It's Daniela Pin Pin Pineda. Uh, apologies. I'll pick Zia Rodriguez. I guess. <laughs> Not Zach Rodriguez. No. Uh, you read first. Um, okay. Do you want to take a guess? Do you want to take a? Do you want to take a guess? A wild guess? <laughs> a wild guess. Is it of, Jewel? No, I mine's from a movie. Mm. Um, I got Padme Amidala from Star Wars. Amidala, Amidala, Amidala. Oh, sorry. And it says, you like a woman with an intelligent mind. You want someone for deep conversations and intellectual pursuits. Padme is a great match for you. Interesting. Fantastic. Um, I got. Uh, hold on, sorry, I went off the thing. Dizzy Flores from Starship Troopers. Um, oh snap! You like digging in and getting your hands dirty. You want a partner who will join in, who's not all fluff and glitter. Dizzy is ready to jump right in with you. Um, it's funny because she plays uh, a character in Friends. Does she now? Uh, I think that's Dina Meyer. Yeah, Joey. Yeah, Joey plays oh, uh, opposite her in a in a play. Is she the roommate? No, no, no. no that's, that I was... thought she was the roommate, but no, it's the weird play with like where she's like kind of going with the director. And she's the one that dates with... Chandler. Right? No, that's Kathy. <sighs> oh yeah, that is Kathy. Kate is the one that Joey does that like really awkward play with. And then she, but she's like with the director and they get together and then she moves away. But then she actually, I don't know. It's a whole thing, but I know exactly the, the one there where they're like, they don't have any chemistry together. Yes. Or was that Kathy? Nope. I don't remember. I don't anyway, remember friends. Oh, she's the one that moves in with Joey. No. <laughs> How am I missing all of these? Uh, okay. Um, yeah, that's, uh, well, yeah, for I, this week's edition of Namely Night. No, it is, though. That was a terrible quiz. That was a terrible quiz. I thought we'd get more entertainment out of it, but it was just no, it was really a slog, objectifying. I'm, I'm yeah, so it was also sorry. very objectifying. I agree. Um, sorry, ladies. And that's it for this week's edition of Namely 90s. Remember, you can find out new episodes out every Monday. Uh, you know, find one that's not this episode and listen to it because <laughs> you know, stop halfway Zinga. through this. And don't listen to the quiz. <laughs> Find us on Instagram, Blue Sky, and YouTube at Namely 90s with 90 s Tell us what you want us to talk about in future episodes. If you'd like to support the show, please check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash Namely 90s, also with a 90s. And finally, you can contact us through our website, Namely 90s.com. Let us know how bad that quiz was. Please subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Audible, Ejectify Women, Deezer, TuneIn, iHeart, Good Pods, and wherever you get your podcasts from. I'm Brandon. That's Andrew. We'll catch you next time. I think I meant to say don't objectify women.